there's always been this very famous demon lord, Demogorgon, and it, it was fun for to see Stranger Things kind of reference it because it was such a terrifying thing. I never had to play against the Demogorgon. Mm -hmm. I always found that art to be absolutely bonkers terrifying for some reason, like this two-headed baboon with four tentacles and all of that. Uh, tell me about the, the Demogorgon. So Demogorgon, as, as envisioned in D&D, &D, yeah. um, traces origins back to the earliest D&D &D products. I mean, Demogorgon was in the, the, the white books from 1974 that kind of were the first official kind of D&D &D product. Then, they gra then uh, Demogorgon graduated to the first edition monster manual. Uh, and had the moniker Prince of Demons. Right. So there are, the Abyss is full of demons, <laughs> and it's full of demon lords, but here we have the Prince of Demons, uh, in theory the greatest of all demon lords, um, uh, the king among, among these horrible, horrible fiends. And it was envisioned originally as this, it has two heads, the tentacles, the scaly flesh, um, very sort of large, intimidating brute of a creature. Um, and uh, I, as a young person, absorbing that first edition monster manual, just loved the art and the originality of the creature. And the fact that um, because it had two heads and each head had its own personality, that kind of made it unusual, uh, yeah. unique among the pantheon of D&D creatures, that you've basically got two, two personalities in one creature, um, the one head, uh, later gained the name uh, Amuel, and the other head gained the name Hethradia, and they're always fighting with each other, which is makes sense for a demon, right? Demons are chaotic evil, they're unpredictable, um, they're, uh, it makes sense that the two heads wouldn't get along. <laughs> but they're stuck with each other, so there's that. And, and there's not like there's not like a necessarily a tunnel or behind that other than if this shows up you're in a lot of trouble. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And whenever Demogorgon has showed up in like adventures or in stories, he, he's just been a force of carnage and destruction, and chaos and and um, a disorder. Yeah, as most demons are, they're not exactly. Like, yeah, they're not like devils who are scheming. Demons yes. are. Chaos, and over the years, we've sort of fleshed out stuff around Demogorgon, like we've we've sort of defined a little bit more about the the plane where on the the layer of the abyss where Demogorgon lives. You know, there's this place called Abysm where you know he dwells, and it's sort of it's a flooded, almost sea with weird structures coming out of it. It's um, very sort of cyclopean and dark, and then. Over the years, uh, there was an adventure path that was done um, in the magazine, in the D&D magazines at one point that centered around Demogorgon and cults and tied to Demogorgon and stuff like that. Is it weird? Because it is weird to me. Like we, We've seen like pop culture be heavily influenced by D&D mm -hmm. for years, like video games, everything else. So a lot, almost everything kind of comes back to it. And so many directors and writers are inspired by D&D. But it's very fun to watch Stranger Things for me because if they say this word, I know what the threat level is of like how scary something is. So like right. that first season when they say, oh, it was the Demogorgon. I'm like, that sucks. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> <laughs> like, you are in yeah. trouble. <laughs> right, yes, yes. <laughs> and it's a fun way to like define it for D&D &D yeah. fans. Yeah, and there's really only a, you know, a few dozen names that can really sort of set that kind of terror level. right. Yeah, and and they've been they've been very good about like identifying what those are like mind yeah. flare. Yeah, that's scary. Demogorgon. Yeah, scary. Fecna. But one of the other great things uh, that I think the show does is it kind of it reinterprets it and makes it their own, right? Yeah. For it, it uses the 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 threat um, in a unique way. Um, sort of puts a like a personal DM's spin on it. That's one of the things we always encourage with D&D is, yeah, we sort of give you details about a monster, but when it comes time for you to actually bring the monster into your campaign, you can make it whatever you want. You can tweak it however you want. And that's like the most 
fun. Like, at least if you've got a good table and you, like, alter a monster and they're like, oh, that's not supposed to be how that goes. Right, yes. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's one of the reasons why you might want to make changes is to surprise players, particularly ones who know these monsters or know their history or, you know, they have expectations and sometimes it's fun to turn those expectations on their head. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, I, I've gone to play in a few of your games and I'm always terrified a bit. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. I've always um, thought I wanted to run like some sort of modern day game but and sort of reinterpret some of these villains. Like Lolf, for instance, who's the demon queen of spiders. I think it would be fun to reinterpret her as an AI. Um, oh, nice. Like the web, the World Wide Web kind of yeah. angle, <laughs> um, but with a demonic twist. I remember like there was modern uh, urban arcana and stuff like yes. that back in the day. Yes. And I still have mine, uh, mm -hmm. which had like all kinds of really cool like takes on monsters or like just original monsters. Exactly. In a, in a like setting. you could imagine there's a version of Orcus, the demon prince of undeath, who's sort of like a, an undertaker. Yeah. Oh, I mean, okay. <laughs> I was going to go mob boss, but undertaker is like, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any other monsters? I sometimes think about, you know, it, what, what Strahd would be like if he sort of lived in a modern interpretation. And then um, recently, I think it was, uh, if it was not the BBC, it might have been some other group that released the updated Dracula. Yeah. Did a, did a new three-part series. Which, which I enjoyed. Which brought there. Dracula into the modern day. Yeah, like, yeah. What would Dracula do with a cell phone? Yeah, I messed around with Strahd once. It was like, I, I was like the... The Demeter and like having the idea that like the shadow fell moved with him and he could go to like mm. any plane in DC. Yes, yes. It's kind of like upsetting. Like I'm going to show up to. You could do one, one where you could do one where essentially the Demeter is the name of an ocean liner and Strahd is just like hosting big parties <laughs> on, the, on the Atlantic and murdering people. It's like Castle Ravenloft, but on the sea. It's a cruise ship. Yeah, it's yeah. a cruise ship. <laughs> Cru cruise ship Ravenloft. There you go. Michael Bay's. Best horror film ever. <laughs> <laughs> if you liked this interview and you'd like to see more, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that little bell symbol so you're notified anytime a video like this comes out. Thank you so much for watching.